Hi, Jeff Burke here from Broadband Forum, and we're here in Warsaw, Poland at our Q1 meeting. I'm here with the chair of our Open Broadband Broadband Access Abstraction Project, Tim Carey. How are you doing, Tim? I'm doing fine. That's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, that's why we call it OBBAA, That's correct? right. Just keep it short. <laughs> okay. Well, OBBAA, as I said, Open Broadband, right? Right. Uh, and Broadband Access Abstraction. Maybe right. we could chat a little bit about what those two concepts are. So what's Open Broadband in general? Well, Open Broadband allows us to uh, take um, uh, certain... Uh, ideas and, and standards and, and concepts from, uh, from, from the broadband form or the industry at large, and we can actually build that uh, framework and those pieces of functionality within uh, an open source community. Uh, in the case of broadband access abstraction, we actually took uh, the, the BA layer, the broadband abstraction layer, mm -hmm. hence the name, uh, of the Cloud CO framework, and we created a reference implementation of that uh, as an open source project. And so we formed an open source project to, uh, to actually prove out part of that uh, broadband form specification. And it's really a new way of doing, you know, standards work and, and uh, collaborative efforts within the broadband form, isn't it? Oh, yeah. They feed off of each other, right? You know, so uh, the, the standards were, were specified to say, you know, this is, this is what we want to do in the functionality for a broadband access abstraction. We bring that over into the open source community and we start implementing those, those standards. And even as we implement those standards, we find and say, hey, there's some improvements here or, or there's something that needs to change there and we pro we feed that back uh, just about quarterly to the broadband forum of of saying here's some new ideas or here's some things that you might want to think about changing and they take that in and adopt it and they improve their standards so it's really a collaborative effort well you, you know it's interesting in that um, you, know, you and I were just talking about the fact that it's not a normal process within broadband forums historic framework either because we you don't really meet per se at the q1 meetings themselves you That's report right. in but you have a, an ongoing uh process of just collaborating you know th using a lot of other tools in order to do that correct yeah we we are we use a very agile methodology you know we, where we uh have a story team and a development team and uh, they meet at their own uh, paces and they, they have meetups and, and it's very independent of the, uh, you know, the, the forums, uh, uh, quarterly meetings and, you know, face-to-faces. And so we typically have, uh, you know, two to three meetings a week, uh, which is for a standards body, <laughs> that would be, you know, for us on a single project, that would be quite extensive, right? right. But for an open source project, it's quite normal. I think, uh, you know, the... The proof has been in the pudding, though. I mean, the reality is, is that uh, you know there was a really um, highly visible demonstration that was done at Broadband World Forum last October on release one, and then here we were just uh, getting in the early early months of uh, of 2019, and you already had release two that was out uh, yeah. out and being released, right? Um, the the case and cadence has been really really rapid and i think that's probably a credit to the way you've been uh, you've been engaging yeah because it's a it's deal and that's part of the agile agile uh, uh development methodology where we we issue releases every six six months mm -hmm. uh, on on a sprint schedule that are every basically every six weeks or two months mm -hmm. within that period and for the example for uh, the broadband world forum we actually took one of our sprints and cut it and made it a minor release right and so that's right. part of that agile methodology that that helps and it, it also allows us to give the feedback again to the broadband forum very quickly because right. we can check things out and then send it back. Right. Well, so release two of OBBAA just came out. What did. Uh, what did people see in that that was uh, unique and uh, of interest to the industry? Well, uh, one of the major problems uh, that we're resolving with, with the BAA layer and with the OBBAA open source project is how do I get my existing uh, elements, network elements, in our case, access network elements into this SDAN environment, into this software-defined environment. And uh, OBBA allows for it because it provides a, uh, a digital representation, always on digital representation, of those nodes that can be used by the SDN controllers and management systems up above that is ex is expecting zero-touch automated deployments, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a way of reducing their uh, or increasing their service agility and reducing their total cost of operations. OBBA provides that. What Release 2 did was it said you could take a, a non 
uh, uh, standard network element, something that was driven maybe the interface to it is by uh, SNMP or, or CLI and, and adapt it to the standard, uh, the broadband standard reference model for, uh, for, for, for uh, that type of access node. It's a big leap. It is a big leap. <laughs> it certainly is, for the, and, and it allows for a, a smoother migration sure. of, your, of your network to, to SDN, and that's, that's part of the value proposition that we have within Cloud CO, within the broadband forms. It gives that ability to do the migration into, into the future. Understood. Well, let's, uh, let's project a little bit forward here. So we, uh, I know that you have been very active doing the storyboarding for release oh, yeah. three here. Um, what are we going to see here in the next sprints and, uh, and release cycle coming up uh, later this year? Yeah, so our, our next release is release three is in August of this year. Uh, we'll be finishing up uh, some work that we have on managing uh, the OLTs with respect to uh, telemetry data and, and alarming. So you'll see some new uh, major features come out in those areas. And then uh, the, the really interesting one is uh, uh, we're, we're looking at some experimental work uh, of how to do uh, uh, appropriate relaying of the control plane so that you can do dynamic provisioning of the network. So uh, between those three features, it's going to keep us pretty busy, and we're pretty jazzed about the whole situation. Well, I'm excited to, uh, to see this come to fruition. I'm sure as we look forward to this fall, we're going to see some uh, really interesting demos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, all, yeah, right? yeah, just wait. It's going to be nice. <clears throat> well, great. Well, um, before we sign off, I did want to embarrass you really quickly. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you, uh, you earned uh, a Distinguished Fellow Award from Broadband Forum, and congratulations. It's the culmination of many, many years of, uh, of work and service and leadership. So congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Well, this is uh, Tim Carey and Jeff Burke signing off from, from Warsaw. <laughs>